This could be the most important topic I've talked about in recent history. How to prepare for what's coming using this Goshen model. Now, around the world, people know my background as an investment banker, as a hedge fund owner, as a hotel owner, and they're asking me, what do I do? And if you have um, that feeling like, what do I do? My assignment seems shifting. How do I get to safety? Stay through to the end of this teaching. I'm going to go through the scriptures. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give you some principles. But I want to talk about very practical advice. And I'm doing this because I'm literally getting people from everywhere asking me the same questions. And I want to put out the teaching so that everybody can get it all at once and begin to prepare. Um, I'm not doing this to uh, hype up fear. This is a very important time coming ahead, and what you do now to prepare is absolutely critical. So, uh, Goshen, let me go over the scriptures because there are some key points that you need to learn. And again, stay with me to the end. Um, in the Bible, the land of Goshen refers to this area in ancient Egypt, east of the Nile, in that delta that the king of Egypt gave to Jacob and his descendants, which is Israel. And we see this. This is a historic happening in Genesis 45.10, and we'll read that. The Israelites resided there until the Exodus. This is, again, this is very important. They stayed in the spot that was given to them by uh, the king of Egypt until the Exodus. And Goshen represents a safe land of plenty and comfort. Um, let's pick up the story in Genesis 45, 6 through 11. This is uh, Joseph on the meeting. Uh, his family had, uh, his brothers had betrayed him. They thought he was dead. He goes through a series of trials and comes out to be the top guy in Egypt under Pharaoh. And this is his discourse as he's preparing his family to come into Egypt. For two years now, there has been a famine in the land. So the first thing we look at, is there a famine going on in our land? Certainly for the word of God, there's a famine for the word of God. But we're also seeing things, supply chain issues, other areas. And for the next five years, there will not be plowing and reaping. So they're, they're two years into a seven-year crisis. But God sent me ahead of you. There are prophets, there are people, there are businesses that are going ahead of God's people in preparation. Listen, to preserve you for a remnant on earth, to save your lives by great deliverance. Again, this is a very... Um, Solemn topic. It's nothing to goof around about. This, this speaks of our lives, our livelihood, our prosperity, our children. Um, uh, great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here. He's talking about his betrayal. Uh, let's skip down a little bit. Uh, now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord over all G Egypt. Come down to me and don't delay, and you shall live in the region of Goshen near me. Um, and your, you and your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and all that you have, I will provide for you there. Now listen, this is not a time to have pockets of money with unrighteous money managers, to have investments in dealings and partnerships and unequally yoked with unbelievers. This is a time to have everything you have in Goshen. In, uh, and we're going to talk about this practically. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household who belong to you would become destitute. It's a, v a very important wake-up call for all of us. Now let's follow this through in Genesis 46 through 28. 
you have to get this principle scripturally. I know a lot of you got, uh, uh, you know, want to scroll to the end and get the practical advice. Don't do it. Take some time. I mean, you've built your life in a certain way, and I believe that this will be a lighthouse to you about what to do in the future. Now, Jacob sent to Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get to directions to Goshen. When they arrive, so Jacob's coming after this, and Joseph meets him with his chariot. As soon as Joseph appeared to him, he threw his arms around his father and wept a long time. Joseph and had his chariot make ready and went to Goshen to meet him. So this is the meeting place and the fulfillment of this word. And um, some of you have not fulfilled your assignment. There hasn't been a fulfillment of it because you've been displaced. And it's been, um, how do I want to say, it's been tolerable for you in the land of displacement. But it's important right now that you get to that land where you are um, absolutely in the land of Goshen. We're going to talk about this again, stay to the end. So there's just a little bit of a picture you see up kind of to the, um, uh, the left-hand side, my left. Uh, you'll see Goshen. It was the delta. Uh, you see Egypt and where Israel is. Now we pick up the story in Exodus. This is an important key. So what's happened? We fast forward the um, uh, Joseph's dis, uh, family and their descendants are living in this land. They, they prosper and they multiply. There's more and more of them. And the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, starts treating them uh, with more and more hostility. They've been treated very harsh until the point where they're so enslaved with hard labor, they cry out to God and God is bringing deliverance. But it's still the same group of people generations later in that same plan, land, I'm sorry. So uh, Exodus 8, 22 through 23, this is an important key. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen. God is going to deal differently with people that are prepared in the sense of being in Goshen. There is some physicality. There are some practical things. There are some spiritual things involved here. Where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that I am the Lord. Uh, I am the Lord am in this land and I will make the distinction. Here's the key between my people and your people, this miraculous sign will occur tomorrow. So this principle is for us right now, that um, God's word, um, I mean, I, I don't have time to get into it. You, you really need to get my biblical wealth series. It just goes through the scriptures about God's plan for wealth. But let me just say this, over and over, God speaks of abundance. There are three states, so to speak, that you can live in. You can live in lack, you can live in sufficiency, you know, where you have just enough, or you can live in abundance. And, you know, the scripture says you'll have an abundance for every good work. I don't have time to go into it. You need to get that teaching. But um, he's saying that there's going to be a distinction by God's hand, by necessity, that during this time, you know, fast forward, you're here with me in uh, going into the summer of 2023, there's going to be a distinction between the people of God. And we'll talk more about it. Let's pick it up in uh, the next chapter, in Exodus 9:23. When Moses stretched out his staff towards the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail. Lightning flashed on the ground. This is a supernatural, um, kind of a hurricane, gale force, hail, um, supernatural, but it's physical too. The people are seeing this. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed. And it was the worst storm in the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. 
Um, I just want to caution us when we're seeing the unfolding. God said, yet once more, I'll shake all things. And part of uh, what we see in the unfolding is supernatural um, geographic signs and of and devastation. I don't, I don't know how to say it any other way. Uh, throughout Egypt, hail struck everything in the fields. Now, keep in mind this is an agrarian culture. Uh, you know, if this isn't just the fields in your park or your greenway. This was their livelihood. This was their food. It struck everything, both men and animals. It beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree. This was a plague from God to accomplish a certain thing, and boy, did he. It stripped everything. In a moment, people went from being wealthy and uh, living in splendor and you know having enough and relying on their crops, and the next day, it's completely gone. So listen to this. Only in the place of Goshen did it not hail was the land, the only place it did not hail was the land of Goshen. So we don't have to fear that sudden overnight turmoil that happened with Egypt. We don't have to have the same fear if we're parked in Goshen that the rest of the world has. All of us are starting to think the world has gone off the rails. I don't know of a serious man or woman of God that is not kind of lifting their hand and saying, we're going against God's plan. And we're all beginning to think, how long does God stand by and let this thing go, go the way it's going? Yes, um, you can look to economic indicators and you can look to certain uh, key trends in economics. Uh, you can look at politics. You can watch the news. But I think there's something deeper that we're feeling. Uh, as Americans, as citizens of this globe, we're feeling this sense of like we're losing the blessing and the protection of God because we're pushing him out of our classrooms, our economies. We're pushing him out of our media, our entertainment, our laws. We're pushing him out How long will he bear with us? God is a gracious God, and please, God, bear with us. So what are the principles of Goshen? And then we'll talk about some practical things. One, there was a safe haven given. All else had calamity. When uh, we see things unleashed of a biblical proportion, you can rest assured, you can begin to say, God, I thank you that when all calamity breaks loose, I am going to live in a sense of peace and provision and prosperity and abundance. This is a promise for us. Um, It was supernatural. So this isn't a sense that people are going to be able to hedge against things with natural remedies. And we're going to talk about that. But um, all the people that I see, first of all, you guys know if you've watched me for any period of time, I am not a big fan of most uh, money managers or people that you're hiring to help you for a number of reasons. But one, sometimes the underlying products that they're selling you through hedge funds through mutual funds and through their placement, are companies that are antagonistic to the gospel. Number two, they don't align with your uh, beliefs, prosperity, um, your, uh, you know, they're not 100% behind you doing well. They're generally in it for themselves. Now, if your interests align with them, so be it. But they're not able to help you with what's supernaturally coming. That's why you have to listen to messages like this. And you have to be proactive. You have to take responsibility. Um, The third principle of Goshen is that they thrive during economic calamity. And uh, if you've been a part of my uh, classes uh, talking about um, 
getting ready. Uh, it's prospering in the time of adversity. We have shirts that say that, how to prosper in the time of adversity. There's opportunity in the time of adversity. There's time to thrive. And total deliverance only came through the blood. Now, this is a big principle. I don't have time to unpack it. But there were uh, other than Israelis living in Goshen that were protected from the plague. But the last plague was the unleashing of the angel of death. And you had to come into a house where the blood of a lamb was put around the door. So I've seen... uh, people from different faiths exercise the principles needed for God's safety and provision, and it works. Uh, I had a great friend, and he was telling me Muslims would tithe to his church because they saw such great financial return because the law of sowing and reaping is for everyone. You know what I mean? It's a universal law like gravity. I don't have time to go down these trails. I'm, I'm sticking to something. So Total deliverance comes through the blood. This is an important time, first and foremost, for you and your household to make sure that you're applying the blood of Jesus through confession of sin, repentance, and belief in the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from sin so that you have no attachment, so that there are no inroads into your mind. This is an important component, and that's the fourth principle of Goshen. Here's one. If we trust in the arm of the flesh, if we're building underground bunkers, storing up endless supplies of ammunition, foodstuffs, do we eliminate God's providence? Well, my answer is I think there's a certain amount of diligence that you can do. Um, It says, uh, the Bible says that when we hear the trumpet, we should prepare for war. When we hear people talking about things, we should do preparation. My concern is, in Jeremiah, it says, cursed is the man who trusts in the arm of the flesh. These things are supernatural. Uh, You can't just fortify against what's coming naturally, and your heart just can't rely on your savings, your strength, your provision. You have to be trusting in God. This is a, a spiritual Goshen as well. God told them to live in Goshen. This is a very important key principle. God told them to live in Goshen. Is there a sense that you, your family, your retirement, has decided to live by the sea, the ocean, be around that retirement community, follow your job to a certain place, your favorite cafe? I mean, I put that in there. Uh, just to show how frivolous it is. But is there a sense that you're someplace with some group of people other than it's the will of God for you? And this is an important thing. Like I said, this is not um, a matter to be taken lightly. But do you need to sit down with your family and go, God, where do you want us? Where is Goshen for us? Goshen might be exactly where you are right now. Geographically, you might be in the right place. But he may convict you and say you moved here because you made $10,000 more than you did in your other job. You moved here because you wanted to retire around a golf course. You moved here for other than uh, reasons for my kingdom. And God said, what did he say? Seek the kingdom first and all these other things will be added. When you're in the kingdom and you're seeking his will, and a big part of that is your location, your oikos, the people around you, your proximity, when you're seeking that, you are in a place of God's mandate to take care of you. You show up and you say, God, you told me I'm here in obedience to you. He is uh, obligated to take responsibility for you. Um, uh I'm not saying that God wants to take all these things away from us. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to use this as a promotion for you to, you know, come and and stay with me here on one of the biggest prophetic communities in the world. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I love it here. I I feel very much at home. Uh, It's an incredible place that that's been built here at Heritage. 
But I am saying that it, sometimes you walk 20 miles into the forest. God's gracious. Uh, sometimes we make mistakes. Our life goes in a direction that God didn't want or plan. But sometimes you got to walk 20 miles back out. You have, might have made decisions that have carried you into another land, and now you're feeling it. If, right now, if you're feeling it, it could be the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying the primary thing is to seek God's kingdom first. This is um, a time, again, it's not trusting in the arm of the flesh. In, in Jeremiah, it's, it's, it's clear. It says, cursed is the man who trusts in the arm of the flesh. He'll be like a desert shrub. He'll be like a tumbleweed, literally. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who's in Goshen, spiritually, physically, mentally, relationally, in Goshen, in that place of God's hand of uh, divine providence, leading. It says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. He'll be like a tree planted by water. Its roots will go through to uh, the water and it won't cease to have green leaves even in the time of drought by trusting in God. Now, um, you might be on a couple ends of the spectrum. Uh, I remember when I first uh, came to Morningstar, um, people were talking about storing up food even then. This is 15 years ago. And I had a conversation with the family, and they said, Dave, there's just not a lot left over at the end of the week after we buy our, our, you know, our main sustenance and pay our bills, you know. So I know a number of you might be in that place of panic and saying, you know, you don't have the finances to build a bunker in Alaska and have uh, a, a, an escape plan with a, you know, a solar-powered house somewhere. I get it. Very, very, very few people do. But you can come and roll into God right now and say, Lord, I know that in the time of calamity, there's a Goshen. And as long as I've been listening to you and seeking your kingdom first, I'll live in that place. And then on the other end of the, the spectrum, you might have been investing in solar panels and batteries. All that stuff is good. I, I think some of it's prudent. But is your heart leaning on that? Remember the man, um, if, you haven't, if you haven't gotten my biblical wealth series, I go through this very, uh, very much in detail the parable of the man that built barns to store his bumper crop, and that night God asked for his life. There's nothing he could do. There's not a sense that we can break off reliance on God regardless of how much your net worth is or what you've stored up in food. Trust me, the best thing you can do is to offer everything to God and to be prudent and live in his kingdom. There are two very important messages that follow this. If you're tracking with me, first of all, like and share. Let's get the word out. Let's get people on a very solid, sane path to Goshen. There are two um, continuations of this message. The first is breaking off of curses. Uh, this uh, Sunday, as I was in church, I saw a person, and I know their life a bit, and I just felt time and time again they start building and the, the blocks get knocked off. It's time and time again they start standing up and the rug gets pulled out. Um, and as I was there, I felt very strongly that there are open doors of curses into their life. This is a, a very uh, uh, important biblical topic. It's throughout the Bible. There is freedom from curses, uh, but I think there's some important steps that we need to take to be free. So breaking off of curses, Goshen speaks of coming out of the system. These can be generational curses. They can be self-inflicted, uh, but they can be cursed items. But I'm going to go through that specifically and give you very practical prayers and things you can do to break off curses. Um, 
And then part three, so this was the first part, part three is poise for God's provision. Are there areas of your life or investments that you're not receiving abundance? Um, let's say just, uh, you know, uh, in a, a very um, demonstrative way, you took a punch, uh, some, some of your money and gave it to someone to watch over it, but they did horrible things with it. Uh, they used it with things that are like, um, you know, antagonistic to the gospel. Well, a lot of companies that people invest in support Planned Parenthood. A lot of companies um, are so sidled with the woke movement, they're using dividends from your investment to, um, to do things that actually attack the gospel. So they're outside of Goshen. Now, let me say this to you clearly. Um, you would have to make your own clothes and grow your own food, not to buy anything from an unbeliever or someone that has uh, less than a biblical worldview. Does that make sense? You would literally have to grow your own food, make your own clothes. But there's a difference between me buying a coat that might have been made by somebody, I don't know, or investing in their company. You see the difference? This is an important time. And um, so there are also conditions for you to receive God's abundance. It's all by grace, ladies and gentlemen. But there are conditions to be fulfilled to receive that grace. Like somebody gave you an inheritance. And they said, okay, this is inheritance. You didn't do anything. It was a great relative that left you this inheritance. But here's what you need to do. You need to let us know that you're staying at the same address. You need to show us your driver's license and the inheritance is yours. That's the same thing about being in a position where you can fulfill the requirements to receive grace for God's abundance. Let me get to it. Do it today. Go to kbabiz.com. It stands for the Kingdom Business Association.com. There's all kinds of wonderful things. But sign up for the 30-day power-up. There's a reason for this. It's my best intake system to get you in to my database. And I can tell when people log in. It's completely free. I don't sell your name. I don't spam you. I don't do anything like that. But it allows you uh, to get uh, an audio series from Lance Wall now and myself. Uh, you get it every day for 30 days. But the more important thing is it shows me who is coming to um, this Goshen connection and is looking for the next two sessions. Or you can email me at info at kbabiz.com and just write something about Goshen or you want the next two sessions. Or you can call me at 803-802-5544, extension 271, and say, I saw Dave on Facebook, I saw him on YouTube or TikTok or wherever you're seeing me. And I want to continue this lesson about breaking off of curses and also poise for God's provision. So let me pray with you. Hopefully this uh, sunk in enough where you're going to make some decisions. Hopefully this uh, is either caused you to think, God, I'm so glad I've been following you and these life decisions or it may be uh, unnerving. You think like, God, I know that I've made some decisions I need to correct. That's okay. Think of this as God's grace on your life, waking you up, getting you into a point. You know, I mean, there was a point where the ark door closed of the ark. You know, Jesus speaks of it. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into it, but now is a great time for you to say, hey, I really need to reanalyze. In light of what Dave's sharing, I need to reanalyze. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every man, woman, every uh, young person watching this. I pray that they would seriously take this next season to go through the information that I've given them and see, are they living in Goshen? Are they uh, poised to you, for your protection, for your grace? And Lord, our first, excuse me, a thought needs to be, are we seeking your kingdom first in all we have and do? 
Lord, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would uh, comfort, convict, change us according to your will. And I pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus. God bless you guys.